Today we are making the greatest, the biggest, the most badass Warhammer model you've ever seen. We're at one hell of a workshop to do it, but it ain't no games workshop. Wet Our Workshop, a magical dream factory full of wonderment and passion for all things creative and lately all things Warhammer. It's a destiny that has been calling for decades. In case you've never heard of Weta, this incredible workshop was the creative force behind the yeah. weapons, armor, miniatures, creatures, and prosthetics from the Lord of the Rings, <laughs> and has since become one of the leading art departments for hire across the film industry, building an incredible range of amazing pieces in a whole suite of films from Blade Runner to District 9, Avatar to Halo, Power Rangers. Go, go, go. No, not you. That's better. Basically, if something cool for screen was made in the last 20 years, there's a good chance that Weta were involved. But they also have an entire collectibles division making fantastic pieces from all of my favorite fantasy and sci-fi worlds, of course, led by Middle Earth. But over the past year, they've been working on the most unbelievable range of just massive Warhammer models. We are deep inside the consumer products division of Weta to see the architect of this Weta game. Games Workshop collaboration, Mr. Jules German. Hey, Lockie. What are we going to do today, Jules? I'll show you what we think is a damn cool 40k character. I'm pretty excited. Everyone here seems to just love Warhammer as much as I do, or probably a little bit more. 20 years. 25 years. Three and a half decades. I'm a huge fan of Games Workshop and, and their universes, so I went to the crew and asked, as anyone else. <laughs> Unanimous scream. Unanimous, yes. yeah. <laughs> Everyone's, you know, this faction, Space Marines, yeah. chaos. Chaos rules. <laughs> we approached Games Workshop, we've got their blessing, we bought our, our skill sets and we started building characters. The first big decision for Weta was of course what to make and my goodness is there a huge range of possibilities and the characters we're seeing today are just a taste of what's on the horizon for Weta and Warhammer. But with Space Marine 2 from Sabre Interactive almost ready to smash through our computer screens, Lieutenant Titus of the Ultramarines was a no-brainer to kick off this new Weta Warhammer journey and to make the project even more interesting, Sabre Interactive have unlocked their vault and handed over a bunch of digital assets to make Titus as accurate as possible. We posed their game model, which is amazing, like that's a huge amount of work done for us. There's still a huge amount of work to do on top. Once we drag it into the real world, there's just a whole bunch of stuff that has to happen that, that a game model doesn't have to do or yeah. perform. Yeah. Richard's usually got something to say on the matter, like if we turn the volume up to 10, he wants it turned up to 13, <laughs> so we'll do that. So today we're going to follow the full journey of the creation of Titus. From concept through the sculpting process, the prototyping, detailing, texturing, molding, casting, and assembly of the final production master before entering the world of painting. But before we can make something physical, we need to make some huge choices. So we're starting with former Forge World sculptor Dan Cockerseal, who took the digital model from Sabre and got to work bringing it into the real world. Yep. So we just made it something that we can easily tweak and change. So I yep. did several concepts in different poses. And obviously we've got the Tyranid on the base, so yeah. it's important with his interaction with the Tyranid and yes, what he was going to be the doing. Big, the big stomp. He was either stomping, shooting, <laughs> cutting in half with his chainsaw, yep. one thing or another. Some sort of extermination of Xenos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. I think this is similar to what became the final lock -off. Exactly, yeah. We started um, off with that. We're just standing on a pile of just lots of um, butchered and decapitated Tyranids. Created a bit of a storm. That story is yeah, there with, visually, with the isn't it? stomp and then looking up. So from that we were able to do a 3D print to scale. Oh, so, so we, that's the FDM plastic one. Yes, that was so that then really became a valuable tool for us to interact with something in the real world that we can make changes on the fly, we can spin it around and we can all look at it, review it all at the same time and make changes and go back to the digital model and then apply those changes. Yeah. This guy's absolutely massive. <laughs> With the digital sculpt finally locked off, Titus is then broken down into 120 pieces, which are then 3D printed in resin at 12K resolution. Some seriously high-end printing gear. You won't see any layer lines here, baby. And then the pieces travel to the almighty collectible sculpting team who do a full surface texture pass, working further detail into the prints physically to make them look absolutely incredible. He's a veteran of multiple campaigns. We wanted that to be displayed to the best of our ability and in this case we felt that was with old school model making techniques. You can see that um, even 
with some of these 3D models, sometimes a sculptor will go in and hand sculpt. Oh, cool. Addition. So he's so, actually gone through and done all the gore. It's been done digitally, but then enhanced physically before yeah. it goes to cast. That's a really nice blend. It must be hard, like, taking something that's, you know, concepted originally to be a tiny little thing, yep, yep. and then up to this massive exactly. scale. So what was the process in, in developing the look of Ceramite, essentially? I did some research on tank armor. Then I just made a custom brush. It's worn out now because yeah, yeah. it's such a big thing, but I created my own brush just by snipping little bits of the bristles off and then I kind of splayed them out a bit so there was less of a brush look and then it was just stippling on some, some Tamiya putty onto it. Oh cool, and so putty over the print yes, to like build yes, up yeah. that texture. And I did two layers and then I burnished it and then hit it again with some primer spray. This is like subtle layers. Yeah, of kind of like all builds together to get yeah. like a really nice finish. Yeah. We've also matched a lot of the damage to the 3D model that we've been given. Very high chance that you'll notice some of these scars in the game. Um, to what we've actually put into this model. So. That is so cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love how like you can literally see like as, as if there's like layers yeah. of ceramite that are yeah. folded together yeah. like a like a katana or something, and it's been. That was just a case of using an ultrasonic knife and just kind of chipping away at it so yeah, to, right. to build those layers up. Now this amazing one sixth scale Lieutenant Titus is available right now down in the description in a limited edition of just 1300 pieces. He is a stalwart veteran of the 13th Legion after all. This edition has all the glorious details and quality finishing we're discovering today, including a bunch of extra goodies, gore options, weapon and helmet stands, and on top of his interchangeable heads and amazing chainsword, you get a thunder hammer. Titus walking around with his massive warhammer was just something that really spoke to us. We couldn't choose if we wanted a chainsaw or a thunder hammer. Whatever day of the week it is, you want to be able to change them. There is also an open edition, so check out the link in the description for the full details on both stunning versions. Once Steve has taken care of just doing the initial ceramite texturing on the 3D print, then I take over and give it a bit of retexture. Okay, cool. Use, using our um, trusty ultrasonic knife. Nice. So you might be the the battle damage master. In battle a way. damage. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yes, that's exactly what I'm doing. For me, it's currently hammer time. So I'm just doing a little bit of texturing on the uh, hand there. Yeah, gauntlets just, don't look too clean. They're probably the they, first thing to they, get pretty they trashed. Would be. So it's it's yeah. I, I spend a bit of time just chipping away. You know, you don't want to make it look like it's compromised. Yes. But it's just got to have this certain amount of, of, of scratching and make it look a bit lived in. So they vibrate at 40,000 vibrations per second. It uses the, those vibrations just to cut through whatever you want to yeah. cut. It also generates heat, like this is styrene. It'll, you can see it's melting up there. A little bit of heat coming through this just from the vibrations. But with the 3D printed resin, it works really well because it gives it like that really nice chipped effect. So instead of you know, doing it digitally, so you can get it like a really reasonably smooth effect like that. But if you wanted to make it look chipped like it's been worn in a bit, and some sort of damage, you know, you can just go in with the point of it, chip in on that where I've just done it, and see the plates away. And then when you clean it up, with my little toothbrush, you've got got nice little scratches. So instead of having this nice flat dent, you've got this like where it's been chipped out by acid or just you know impact damage. But because of the vibrations going in there, that you know it gives you a really nice effect. If we don't fill it with clay that it's too light and uh, it can break its mooring. Oh, and, and then bubble up in the silicon. Flow after, the last thing you want is like bloop. You know, you've got a floater. <laughs> <laughs> I'm adding a little bit of texture to Titus's power pack just to make it, uh, make it pop, make it look like it's got a little bit of life. My old favorite mix of Tamir, Putty, and Lacquer Thinners. Dab, 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 dab. This is the top of the power pack, so we decided to add a little bit more detail into the back of it. <laughs> <laughs> Big and little. Yeah. Skadoosh. Power pack is ready to go to molding. And I'll just take that downstairs to Bryn, and then he'll pick it up and get it ready for silicon two parts so we can have that little bit of extra detail, some cavities in there. All right, let's go for a walk. Uh, you know, this is, okay, ta-da, oh, you go. Get to work, Bryn. <laughs> the next thing to do is to figure out the best way to mount this up for molding. 
we'll have to choose the angle that will cause there to be the least number of bubbles. So we're not actually making one Titus today, we're making three. One production master to go to the factory for master moulding and two paint masters, one for Weta and one for the factory to ensure perfect quality control on the production line. So that means we need some silicon moulds to make three perfect duplicates. So we're deep inside the Weta workshop behemoth now. We are in the moulding and casting workshop specifically for all of the cool collectibles. We're here with Jack, he's preparing some mould boxes at the moment, which we're gonna fill with a lot of silicon. Uh, oh, so this will be like where you cut from the downside. Yes, oh, yeah. that's brilliant. Think of it upside down, yep. negative. Pouring through this, and then the bleeders are for any high points the product can find a way out. Yeah, so Spot. it'll trap air in that, trap, in that exactly. cavity. Yep. We just glue them on, and it allows the product to find its way out and fill all that detail that and then you just trim it and clean up and exactly yeah, yeah. Nice and neat. yeah you can see nice big chunky key slots in yeah so this is a cast we've got already you can see our cut line running through this is always we come through with scalpels or sanding paper and you can you can actually just scrape away that seam so you kind of think of this as a negative in a positive way yeah um, <laughs> We're going to pour the silicon in. It's going to capture all this beautiful detail from our uh, 3D print. So this blue line as well, this is our cut line. That actually shows up in our silicon. So as we cut open the mold, we're actually using it as our guide to, to cut. It's, it's, um Mixed, then we actually um, degas it. Okay. Throw it in the back chamber. Um, gets rid of all the bubbles. Yeah. Um, as much as we can, and we always want to try and pour pretty high up. So is that sort of stretching out yeah. the bubbles with a really high pour? Yeah, okay. Reducing the amount of bubbles. I've just picked a corner. This is a massive mold. This one. Yeah, that's going to take a few a few buckets. Probably twenty kilos. That's five kilos. So this is Preston, our vacuum and pressure chamber. Getting bubbles out of our, our yes. resin or our silicon. Yep. So our little guy's going in. So you can see there's still some little surface bubbles on top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like the tube. I bring it up to 80, 85 PSI. Yeah, have a look inside. <laughs> So we've headed down the road to the collectibles room. We're here with Joshy. The silicon's been poured, it's cured overnight, it's come out of the box. And so now you're getting that master out of there, Joshy? This particular one is like a bunch of skulls like that. And okay, got cool. big cavities in between. You don't want to damage that silicon as you're pulling the master yeah, out, yeah. right? And it'll probably be like destroying the master as okay. it comes out. Yes. Because this happens to be like one of the worst. <laughs> Great, <laughs> we've picked the best thing to show then. Awesome. Yeah. The way that you're cutting this is important, right? This is the wavy cut thing. Yeah, so just the wavy cut along the top to kind of try and... So when you go to staple it, that's all going to key in nicely. Cheeky skull. 95% of the master. 95 of the master. Yeah, alright, pulling out the yeah, little yeah. bits. So we'll put some talc in it and then it'll go on a hot box. Yeah, why does the talc get heated? You heat it to like bake it so it makes it fully cured and then the talc's gonna like draw any of the oils oh, out of the silicon. Oh, right. Because this particular one had a lot of little, little tomfoolery. And, yeah. yeah. Jiggery pokery, I yeah. believe is the official way to term. Yeah. <laughs> Everything else has come out beautifully. Yep. Is, yeah, we literally. had to fill the one that was paying. Yeah. With the molds ready to rock and roll, it's time to jump back to Jack for a resin pour truly worthy of Zorpazorp. So anti-foam just helps our resin from bubbling up and over. Often, like, resin could get too aerated while it's, it's being mixed, right? Yes, totally. That's brilliant. 
So that was part B, mixed in with tint and a bit of anti-foam, one to one. Oh, that's nice and easy. So I'm doing 300 grams. It's better to have a little bit more than less. So I'm going to mix up for about a minute and a half. And then I'm gonna let this degas. You can see it's starting to rise. Oh yeah, look at it come up. And see how it drops now? Yeah. So I'm gonna wait about a minute. So that's now coming back up to take bubbles out yep. of the resin. I'm gonna flick back and it just pushes it all in. Jack proceeded to undertake some sort of magic resin curing ritual, adjusting the pressure vessel up and down, shaking, banging and tapping the frame in a very personal and honed method to nail every single bubble and yield the greatest possible cast. Just adding extra weight on top. About 60, 70 psi. Keeps pressure on the moulds. It keeps the product in. So now we're leaving them in for an hour and then they're ready to pop? Yep, pretty much. This is a very crucial part because I don't want any, anything snapping or breaking. Guess you need to be careful of the mould as well too. Yeah, yep. Off. Goal. The big shot, the hero reveal. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> oh, it looks pretty good. Awesome. So you can see here where the flashing is. This is all our, where our seam, our cut line is. And it's basically it just a, a really massive piece of Warhammer. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> Forge World Resin yeah. from the Weta World Workshop. <laughs> yeah, how cool is that? Man, look at that detail. Yeah, even the teeth. Yeah, the missing teeth. If you're enjoying this Weta Zorbazorb collaboration, make sure you check out the absolute banger we released last week where I spent a full day in the Weta Workshop Armory forging a real sword from Lord of the Rings with Master Swordsmith Peter Lyon who made the original weapons for Peter Jackson's movies. I'm really proud of it and it'd mean the world to me if you check it out after this one. Link down in the description and the pinned comment. We've got casts here that have been ripped out of the silicon mold, Steve, and you're essentially doing a huge, <laughs> a massive cleanup job, right? Yeah, we've got a lot of components to get through. I think we're looking at 120 molds so far. 120 so, pieces, that is a lot. And nibs, three. marines, what's been the trickiest so far? Doing the Tyranid's been the easiest just because he's so... Like the Tyranid? Organic-y. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Whereas, like, it's the clean plate, Absolutely. isn't it? Absolutely. Yep. A few piles here uh, of a mold master that will the factory will take all its um, um, casts from. Yeah. And then on these two trolleys here, we've actually got the paint masters <laughs> being, being set up. It's just space raids and tearing it everywhere <laughs> on, on these trolleys. Yeah. Very cool, we've got some wicked bowl pistols and gorgeous little bits of power armor. Quite like the gooey factor as far as uh, all the, the battle damage that he's got on. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, there's, <laughs> like these, these gore, like yeah, you can see like where here. the boot print has like smooshed his jaw flat. <laughs> That's gonna be a fantastic little piece. This is the amount of like love and detail. It's just the base. It's just the base. Look at this thing. Mental. Crunch. Look at that. We then let Steve get back to work cleaning up the rest of the casts and checked back in with him later in the week to see Titus one last time before he gets covered in paint. Oh Come yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at these little teeth. One of the pauldrons here for Titus, but if you look on the inside, Leonard's actually modelled it so he has a, like an under pauldron <laughs> that is suspended by these hydraulics. That is incredible. I mean, it's just such an unnecessary detail. <laughs> yeah. Like, I think what, what we're hoping is that the person who buys one will be able to put the pauldrons on themselves. Yeah, right, so that you get that armouring experience. Exactly. This is the under pad, yeah, the under shoulder pad. And then we've got those little little McGovern's there that the uh, little pistons go into that hold the outer shoulder pad. And that is why the damn shoulder pads are so bloody big. <laughs> <laughs> How good. Let's do left and right, shall we? Make sure we do that. Left and right for his thighs, waist, his belt, belly section to lock onto, chest plate. Then we've got his arms, the tassets, on that side. and that's uh, more of his back. A pistol, which isn't very little, it's quite large. Wing cloth, back. Most of these details I've seen 
in the FDM print, the big bamboo, but seeing them like move into the resin, yeah. it's like night and day. Oh, cool. So that's dangling down. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Oh, so yeah, they're, they're all modelled individually. So yeah, you have the yeah. shin plate and then all the various it. details over yeah. the top. So we've got all sorts of... Look at this Ultima. A multitude of skulls that are, that are going on the base. <laughs> ah, yeah, we've seen some of these we've get seen, casted up. Yeah, so... So this is Steve. Uh, <laughs> yeah. This one was Barry. Where do I have named all of the corpses? They're just that, just that detail centric. <laughs> Should name each skull after, like, members of the team. <laughs> We're all on the base as a skull. Yeah. <laughs> Tail section. That's heavy. I like to think he's got his... Lunch in one of these bags. <laughs> totally. And I was trying to think. Little Space I'm Marine doing. sandwich. A BLT in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, normally when we say exploded Space Marines, this isn't what we mean. But here we have the exploded version of all of our pieces, and and these are sort of almost on their journey to go off to paint. Yeah. Now, right, Steve. Yeah. We're just making sure the fits right, and then they'll go uh, to Sirisac and Jules, I believe. Yeah, be yeah, tackings. and maybe a bit of me. I might Ooh. get to I might, I might get to go and hang out on the painting journey as well. So we'll nice. hopefully do that in our next sort of dive deep into this thing. But we've got we've got <laughs> it's it's one model, but it's really two. <laughs> so we've got the gorgeous Nid here as well. What's been your kind of favorite piece do you think? You've you've had such an intimate working with every little bit now. It's definitely the Tyranid. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm all about Xeno, so I'm absolutely stoked to have uh, this this one of our well, our first Warhammer piece. So. It's gorgeous, isn't it? It's absolutely gorgeous. Well I cannot wait to see it get painted. Thank you so much for taking us through it today, dude. No worries. What a space marine, what a tyranid, <laughs> what a piece.